Okay, today we're going to be talking about some shared American values and how they work themselves out in perhaps less shared ways. Uh, okay, so the American political culture. We tend to view America as very polarized. It's We're feeling very polarized these days. One that's very divided by political ideology, race, gender, geography, etc. It's true that there are many beliefs that divide us, but beneath those beliefs we do share some things in common in general. Political scientists have argued that Americans share a common political culture, a distinctive and patterned way of thinking about how political life ought to be carried out. Put another way, Americans tend to share a similar set of values. Political scientists have identified five core values Americans tend to share. Popular sovereignty, the, the concept that we believe the people should rule. We tend, as Americans, to share that idea that we the people should be the ones ruling the country. Uh, liberty, freedom, we tend to share the idea that humans should be free. Um, we all, as Americans, tend to agree that individuals uh, should be responsible for themselves, that they have a certain amount of responsibility to, uh, to take care of themselves. Um, but we also believe that there should be some sense of an equality of opportunity. Now, how we interpret what that means, equality of opportunity, is different depending on which side of the political spectrum we fall on. And then finally, civic duty and participation. We tend as Americans to believe that we are responsible for our country because we believe we are the people who should be ruling. And therefore, we have a certain duty to take care of one another and to participate not only in the political process, but participate as community members to make the community better. Okay, so popular uh, sovereignty. We discussed this in the previous uh, video. Popular sovereignty is the idea that people, the populace, us, give the power, sovereignty, to the government. We feel that it's important to vote for the people who represent us and weigh the laws that govern us. Um, can't have a discussion because you're not, uh, we're not together. Liberty. Liberty is a freedom to do as we please as long as we do not harm others. Of course, we can't do anything we want any at any time. Most Americans would agree that your rights and liberties end where they begin to infringe on somebody else. You're free to do uh, what you like as long as you are not causing harm to another, for example. Individualism or individual responsibility. Individualism means that each person is responsible for their own selves, their own actions, and their own success or failure. We tend to believe that Americans should rely on their own hard work whenever possible. Um, <clears throat> how much the U.S. spend on social programs, um, for example, welfare as compared to other countries. Uh, and you can see we tend to consider people uh, to have the responsibility to take care of themselves, which is reflected in this graph. We can see lower than many other um, uh, countries in, in Europe and other uh, Western countries, uh, we tend to spend the least percentage of our GDP on social programs, which reflects our concept of uh, individual responsibility. <clears throat> now, uh, equality of opportunity. Americans believe that people are accountable for their own success and failure, but they also believe that people deserve the same opportunities to be successful. This is called equality of opportunity, the idea that people should have access to the same opportunities in life, regardless of their background. It's not the same as equality of result. Equality of result means that all people receive the same outcome. Everybody earns the same income, for example. Most studies demonstrate that Americans, unlike many European countries, don't support limiting top incomes or equalizing incomes, which is, a, uh, which is an illustration of our concept of we don't believe in this equality of result necessarily. And then finally, civic duty and participation. Americans believe that it's important to do our civic duty, participate in government, and give back to society. Example of doing our civic duty, volunteering, voting, staying informed, taking civics classes. What are other examples you can think of? According to this graph, what percentage of people voted in the most recent national election? I thought she... <laughs> uh, So does that actually reflect our values necessarily? 
Studies have shown that Americans tend to view volunteering as a more important way of doing our suity, uh, civic duty than voting or jury duty. A lot of people loathe their jury duty. I know that I, I whinge and complain when I get that notice that I've got to do jury duty because I don't like missing a paycheck. So yeah, I'm guilty of that one too. <clears throat> Where do these values come from? Historians have su suggested a few possibilities. These shared values that, that most Americans share, where do they come from? Um, our Puritan past, um, meaning the, uh, the religious folk that came uh, in the earliest stages of, a, uh, of, of European colonization uh, of North America, many of them were um, a, a conservative sect of Christianity uh, that emphasized um, work ethic, uh, but also freedom, uh, because of course they were coming to North America to be free in terms of their practice of religion. Uh, American Revolution, uh, popular sovereignty, yes, we were, we were built, the, the country that we now have was built on a revolt against authority, uh, a revolt against the, the king's authority. And so we have that concept of, of, of freedom and, 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 and popular sovereignty, democracy built into our, you know, our very foundation as a nation. Um, frontier life also, a lot of people lived basically in anarchy, really. Uh, the, if you were in the, in the Western areas, it was really... Uh, you do, do what you see fit, and maybe some law would show up every once in a while, but for the most part, you were on your own, and you did what what um, uh, what you could, but also meant that if you didn't survive, well, that's, again, on your own head. You, had, you were responsible for your own survival, and um, so this is part of um, what historians have suggested is the reason we have individual responsibility and also the concept of e equality of opportunity. Uh, the impoverished had the opportunity to go to the frontier and possibly make a, uh, a living in a way they couldn't in the cities. And uh, they, uh, they had the equality of opportunity to either survive or to die on the frontier. Uh, are there any values you think are missing from that list uh, that we've mentioned? Are there any you think should not be included? <clears throat> now, uh, we can't discuss that. Well, let's just go ahead and put this in your Ed Puzzle answer. If we share so many similar values, why do you think there is so much conflict over specific arguments about abortion, LGBT rights, immigrations, etc.? What do you think? One might argue that it all comes down to a difference in how we interpret these values. Uh, case in point, uh, Regents versus Baki. We're going to look at a specific Supreme Court case. Uh, and then we're going to see how it can is a reflection of a, a certain shared American value, but both sides of the argument interpret that value in different ways. So let's take a look at this. Reasons versus Abaki, a Supreme Court case back in 1978. Uh, so this is Baki. Alan Pibaki, an engineer and former Marine officer, sought admission to medical school, was rejected for admission by several uh, s uh, medical schools due in part to his age. He was in his early 30s, which they thought that was too, too late to get started. After twice being rejected by the University of California, Davis, for sp specifically, he brought a lawsuit in uh, California State Court challenging the constitutionality of the school's affirmative action program. Now, uh, affirmative action is the policy of favoring individuals belonging to groups known to have been discriminated against previously, and that they are experiencing basically um, some sort of um, residue in terms of their economic status or what have you uh, as a result of being discriminated against previously. So the purpose of affirmative action is to somehow work against that 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 hole that that particular group has has been uh, thrown into by previous discrimination. Uh, okay, so the California Supreme Court struck down the program as a vi uh, violation of the rights of white applicants and ordered Baki admitted to UC Davis. UC Davis appealed their case before the U.S. Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court accepted the case. 
uh, the case fractured the court that nine justices issued a total of six opinions. In other words, there's nine justices on the Supreme Court, and instead of there being maybe uh, one side that, that publishes what they thought was the right answer, and another side who disagrees and they publish what they thought to be the right answer, we had six different, quote, opinions on what the right answer was. So it, it was very divisive in the court. Um, the final judgment of the court, the one that ultimately represented the majority in terms of what the court is officially saying is their judgment, uh, was written by Justice Louis, uh, Louis F. Powell Jr. <clears throat> and so this is what that decision, which means it became basically the law of the land. Um, Affirmative action in general was allowed under the Constitution. This is what the Supreme Court decided. Under the Constitution and uh, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the UC Davis program, however, went too far. Uh, and so UC Davis, according to the Supreme Court, so US, uh, UC Davis lost the case and Bakke was admitted to their medical school. Um, so what the Supreme Court decided ultimately was that race can be one of the several factors based on the Constitution and Title VI, um, but it, they can't set specific quotas such as 16 out of 100 seats uh, being set aside for minority students as, the, as UC Davis had been doing. Um, so the practical effect of Bakke, this, meaning this court case regents of UC Davis versus Bakke, was that most affirmative action programs continued without change. So now you use your critical thinking skills. What American value does regent versus Bakke most directly relate to? There's one of these that is the most relevant to the case. Which is it? Um, <clears throat> now, Equality of opportunity is the answer. It's the most relevant. Now, what I want you to do again is use your critical thinking skills. How would someone who sides with Baki's point of view, Baki, the 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 the, young, the medical student who was getting rejected and and uh, uh, due to what well, in his view he believed it was due to uh, affirmative action, <clears throat> and so how would someone, for example, if you are are someone who uh, feels that Baki's point of view was the right point of view. Explain how this is an example of uh, that view being equal opportunity, a support of equal opportunity. Okay. Now, if you don't support Baki's point of view, you're going to have to use your imagination. How is his position an example of supporting equal opportunity? Now, now, how would someone who sides with UC Davis's point of view in any school that's trying to enact affirmative action programs see their view as also an example of supporting equal opportunity? So if you have this view, if you agree with UC Davis's point of view and the whole concept of uh, affirmative action, explain how that works and how that's an example of equal opportunity. Those of you who don't hold that view, you're going to have to use your imagination here. What do you? Th how do you think people who see it UC Davis's way and the affirmative action way? How do you think they see that as a, an example of equal opportunity? Okay, so now go ahead and go to uh, the other assignments for today. They are in Google Classroom, their worksheets, uh, where you uh, will take this concept further. <clears throat>